Uh, there could be some possible uh, activity in Congress uh, before we break for the uh, long weekend. We've got Greg Valier, Chief U.S. Policy Strategist at AGF Investments, joining us now. Greg, always good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, so now we're hearing the Treasury is trying to push through an additional $250 billion in aid for small businesses. A vote is expected, I believe, in the Senate today, but we already know House Democrats are opposing this. What are the chances it gets passed? I am not real optimistic, Alexis, about getting it done this week. Uh, first of all, the Democrats in the, in the, uh, the House and Senate want an, another $250 billion in addition to the $250 for small businesses. That extra $250 would go to state and local governments, hospitals, food stamps. I don't think the Republicans are ready to go there, but even if they were, there's another snag that has to be addressed, and that is in the House, there'll probably be at least one or two dissenters, which means you've got to bring back half of the House to get a quorum. This is antiquated. I mean, haven't they heard of Skype or haven't they heard of, uh, you know, conference calls? So my hunch is that it would require the Senate and House to come back next week to get this done. I, I think Mnuchin's done a great job. I think he can cut a deal, but I don't think we're going to get this money right away. And if you want to get small businesses up on their feet, they need money ASAP. This is going to take maybe another week. Uh, Greg, we saw Chuck Schumer earlier in the week float this idea of, of folks getting $25,000 hazard pay. How realistic is that? Uh, not right now. I, I think you've got a lot of Republicans saying, let's just slow down and take a, a look at what we've already done. They did $2.2 trillion, as you know, about 10 days ago. I, I just think that they are worried about maybe stampeding doing too much. And frankly, I think that uh, Jerome Powell knew that there could be a snag this week. And I think he it's one of the reasons why he unveiled this dramatic new proposal this morning. I want to pivot uh, here, Greg, to politics and the 2020 election. We know that uh, Senator Bernie Sanders finally dropped out of the race yesterday, so it looks like the Dems now have their nominee in Joe Biden. And at the same time, we're seeing Trump's approval rating sliding back into the mid-40s. He did get a, a bit of a pop uh, prior to that. And in most polls, um, Americans are not satisfied with how the administration is handling this pandemic. Would you actually call the incumbent in this election year, an underdog at this point? Not yet, Alexis, but I think the, the view earlier this year that Trump was the clear favorite has now diminished greatly. Uh, I think that a lot of Americans feel especially that the aid to small businesses has been uh, chaotic, has not been rolled out very well. I think Trump's press conferences are becoming unproductive for him. I mean, all of his self-congratulation and then uh, picking fights with the World Health Organization and the media and governors, you know, I, I think these press conferences are doing him no good. So all of a sudden, the number that has shocked me the most is that by a clear majority, the public thinks that the government isn't doing a good job. And I would say that uh, this lead that Biden has now over Trump is not illusory. I think Biden has a chance to win. And, and I mean, I know it's hard to say and November 3rd seems like very far off at the moment, but how do you think voting is going to change this year? I mean, the physical act of voting, we've been talking about uh, mail-in ballots. There have been instances of fraud with that. What do you, when you envision the actual act of voting, what does it look like? I, I Well, first of all, God willing, there'll, there'll be a great uh, drop in new cases and we'll have a normal election. But if the virus is still persisting, you know, th there could be a mail-in. There could be other ways to, to vote. Uh, that's going to be totally chaotic. I, I think all of us in Washington dread that scenario. I think it's unlikely. One other real quick point I'd make, even if even if Biden does win, I don't see a big problem for the markets because I still think the Senate stays Republican. And if that happens, the Senate is the firewall that would block all sorts of radical legislation, Medicare for all, Green New Deal coming from the House. So I think as long as the Senate stays Republican, the markets could handle a, a Biden victory. What needs to happen between now and November for Americans to change their opinion of, of President Trump? 
Well, I think obviously we need to get the cases down. We need to get the economy uh, growing. But a, again, I don't think Trump helps himself by boasting about what a great job he's done. And I've talked to Democrats who say that the ads this fall for the Democrats are going to just consistently hammer away on when he said, we just have 15 cases going down to one. We're going to hear that soundbite over and over again. And also when he said, I'm not responsible for the problems with the testing kits. We're going to hear that soundbite over and over again. One of many reasons why I think he is hardly a shoe in in November. All right, Greg Valier, Chief U.S. Policy Strategist at AGF Investments. Always a pleasure. Have a great weekend. You too. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.